My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Sam and Max, Freelance Police, the epic one-shot is the order of the day. But first, Jimmy, what do you have? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where I post my out-of-print zines and mini-comics, showing off the back cover of the ballpoint pen uh, zine. But it's it's funny animals. Yes. So I figure that's the, uh, the order of the day. Um, you can download a lot of these. You can see lots of my original art, my process of how I make the comics I make, and uh, everything that entails and lots more. So if you like what we do here, if you like these glimpses that you see in the beginning, you can find more of it at patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room Issue 1, going to hit the streets May 2021. We're going to be hitting that print button about 10 days from now. Jimmy, orders have to be in uh, on April 20th, so that day might have passed by now. Uh, Here are some of the variant covers for Issue 1. There's the Jim Rugg variant by way of Dan Klaus and 8-Ball Issue Number 1. I like to think of it as our collaboration. Yes. (laughs) The Kayfabe channel is our collaboration. Peach Momoko variant cover. Uh, There is the variant cover for uh, Third Eye Comics, a chain of stores in Maryland and Virginia. The store uh, orders 1,000. They get a special cover from us, Jim. And uh, it's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Sam and Max, Freelance Police. Another uh, cult cult classic uh, comic, Jimmy by Steve Purcell, who's a cartoonist that I like a whole lot, but he's also one of those rare morsels. They have this outside life beyond comics, and I feel thankful when these kind of people do come into comics and make a couple. He hooks up with um, George George Lucas? Is it Industrial Light and Magic? Uh, Lucas Arts, the Lucas games, Arts. man. So, yes. so uh, the Scum Games, S-C-U-M-M, uh, the Maniac Mansions, the point-and-click gimmicks... He was doing art for all kinds of stuff, man. Zach McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders, he did that cool cover. Uh, Sam and Max beco- becomes a scum game. Uh, I think he did the cover for Maniac Mansion, maybe. Work for Industrial Light and Magic. Work, work for, he works at Pixar right now. Like, this guy has a career way beyond yeah, the, the comic so page. That's kind of going forward from here. Go back, and his peers are... Art Adams, Mike Mignola, did they go to school together? They maybe room together. Um, cartoonist, cartoonist, like, yeah. like s- s- some super talent in that in that clique. I always uh, confuse their school with Cal Arts, but it's not. It's called like California School of like Arts and Crafts or some weird shit like that. Um, but very heck, nice cover. Heck of a pedigree, uh, dude. His color work is incredible. I have no idea the medium, maybe uh, gouache or something. But one of the things that I always liked about it is uh, no black holding line, using interesting color for, like interesting colored lines for the holding lines on uh, a lot of the stuff. And then he is from the school of like the Will Elder, Chicken Fat Man. Every panel has some kind of crazy stuff. And even this cover, they're like these, like, what, potato monsters or something with little eyes, little buds on them. His design for these two characters is very unusual, I think, for, like, cartoon animals. It feels like he's one of those cartoonists where it's it's a complete world that he's creating uh, in his style. And you don't see that very often. Right. You know, that's the stuff that I, th- we've talked about it with other cartoonists in the past. That's the stuff that stands out. Like, take me to a different world. <laughs> yeah, and I think he does a, a heck of a job with that. I don't think he's quite abiding by uh, perspective grids or anything, but like he can really capture this like skewed perspective of that gun. Well, like, the gun is barrel is bending; it's almost a fisheye. Exactly. It's, yeah. It's very. Uh, it's very unusual that look. And the little guy, man, he's got like one of them Nazi guns. But you see it right here, man. The gags per square inch kind of thing, man. There's like a head in a bucket. It's all random stuff that actually lends itself well to those scum games. Because, like, if you ever played those things, congested, cluttered up environment, yeah. and you got to find the clue. And there's a lot of things to click on with the mouse. So uh, definitely encourage people to play those games, man. But this is a very non-sequitur kind of... Uh, what are they known as? Freelance police? Yeah. So they'll do jobs for the police. They're kind of like private eyes but for some reason they don't go by private eye right part of that that weird world and these little rat creatures man they inhabit that world in a big way there's also a lot of bop popsicles in <laughs> in this world man there's some fun storytelling stuff like so this rat stole the popsicle from the ice cream man 
they get it back. <laughs> Our big dude has it and is like eating it and it just gets smaller and smaller each each one, each panel. Fun whenever all the uh, all the mice because they're it's a whole rat gang that's robbing the ice cream man and whenever they tell them to freeze they they race off. <laughs> A lot of classic comics language throughout. Sure. You know, like the cloud, the cloud of dust and running away, good sound effects, those kinds of things. Yeah, worked as an animator for those uh, LucasArts uh, games and, and Industrial Light and Magic. You see it as they get into, like, the the office next door is a, a, a private eye, hard-boiled private eye, you know, knife stuck in his back. <laughs> uh, hard weekend of, like, passed out bodies around from drinking and stuff. So, again, playing up those tropes and cliches as part of his uh, storytelling methodology. Some of the uh, earliest comics that he did was uh, for the Fish Police guy. I think he penciled a couple issues, six, seven or whatever. And the first Sam and Max uh, publication was a part of that, self -pub that self-published Fish Police guy stuff, Fish Rep Press or something like that it was called. This is a crazy adventure. Uh, we're gonna get our characters to go to the moon and uh, we know they're going to the moon because the mailman brought them a uh, greeting card or, or a postcard. Yeah, from, from police commissioner with uh, almost an in encrypted message or something kind of weird on the back. Yeah, it's very strange. <laughs> uh, whenever they get to the moon, I think, is it the page flip here? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're on the moon the very next <laughs> They just page. arrive, and the way they do it is in inserting a bunch of match tips into their uh, into their muffler. <laughs> right. And this is like... <laughs> With a warning. <laughs> don't, don't do that at home. Unless you really want to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that shit, that, that like mythical thing that, that we all heard about with the tennis ball and... and... The, the match heads and stuff straight from the anarchist cookbook. Yes. Here's their space outfits. And it kind of works. It's like, it's like, you know, two lunch bags and the little <laughs> rabbit dude has the, uh, like the little wine. Yeah. Little wine paper bags. Kind of works. <laughs> like you could identify it, I guess is what I'm saying. This is pretty gross, man. Scratching his tooth and he's got some, some gimmicks on his, uh, his finger. That's super gross. <laughs> Never a dull moment. You know, we were looking at that Art Adams Gumby comic, and there was just like a lot of crazy stuff happening on every page. That happens in Sam and Max. Yeah, you'll see little glimpses that remind me of um, Art Adams especially. Stylistically, they're different, but there'll be little moments. Even like weird like hatching or something in the background. Every now and then, it'll be kind of a glimpse or a mouth, you know, and, and uh, you can imagine them being peers. Sure. Uh, maybe a, a few years before this. That is that interesting interesting thing when, when, you're, when you have homies who, who draw and you see how they handle certain design problems or something and you see them do something right. I'll take that. I'll take that one for myself. Draws these rats very well, as you said. There, this whole comic is full of them. I don't know about other Sam. This is the only Sam and Max comic I've read. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if rats populate all of the Sam and Max world this much, but uh, draws rats very well. <laughs> and I guess you have to if you're going to have as many as he has. You know, for as weird as this comic is, it almost works like a uh, like a comic strip because it could be done at any page. Like this, this could be the end of the story. <laughs> this liquor shop is getting held up, right? And Sam and Max are a part of the game, but then they they beat the guys up or whatever, vanquish vanquish evil, but the shop owner still keeps his hands up. Right. And the little rabbit dude just keeps telling him, you can put your hands down now. Would you like to put your hands down now? He's being nice, nicer. And then just screams at him, and then sends the dude off. <laughs> it's a very Such a dumb guy. Yeah, it's like Midwestern humor. Right. Sea, sea monkeys. Oh, I didn't even catch those on my read. Yeah, me neither, actually. Got your center spread, man. <laughs> I do love his suit. It's such a, uh, you know, it's like a dad a dad suit or something. <laughs> Whenever you read hard-boiled detective fiction, uh, they always mention, like, the cheap suit. So you got to have the cheap one. But then you have this, like, Yakuza gimmick. Yeah, that thing's pretty wild for uh, early 90s, I think. <laughs> How about this one? Like, the authentic pimp suit. What's a pimp? Right. 
<laughs> and there's a, a, a gag about there's some uh, three foot pimp running around naked now. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like this what's a pimp? That's like what, like. He desperately wants a little kid to go up to his mom and be like, "Mom, a hundred percent, a hundred percent." I love it. Um, these are funny too, like the the masks. And this one is just like his head is kind of shaped like a gum machine. That's so weird. He's got a good brush line. Yeah, nice bold brush line. Yeah, the style is really different. I mentioned Art Adams, but the finishing is very unlike Art Adams, and unlike almost anybody, especially doing this kind of funny animal stuff. It's He's, um it's full of gags, but it's not full like Will Elder where it's a million little things. You know, it doesn't feel cluttered. Yeah, right. Even though there's a lot of information on the page. See, this stuff would be like a background in a scum game, and then you right. would click that, and then it would set off some sort of Rube Goldberg or something. The floating rat head. That's Again, pretty speaking sick. to his ability to draw these rats. Yeah. Must have had a model or a pet or something. The little poofers on the side, man, is a little weird sometimes. I think it's a pretty good muzzle. Yeah. Yeah, probably like, probably like super accurate. Yeah. You know, like the rats that we see boiled down, like are missing that piece. Hopefully, yeah. And the rats that I see uh, are from a distance. <laughs> sure. I'm not getting too good of a look at them. So the deal is these rats on the, on the moon are disappearing and it's a giant population of cockroaches that are using them, uh, you know, for, I guess, nefarious purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to spoil anything yet. I like whenever they show them and it's like these cockroaches are 50 feet tall, but there are still cockroach sized in like humans, uh, what would be human sized kitchens? Right. If the human were like, I don't know, 600 feet tall, whatever it would be <laughs> in relation. Right. <laughs> this is such a good piece too man We're, you know they're splitting they're getting out of there our dog dude gets through poor little uh, I guess is that Max yeah Max yeah, little Max gets caught up and he's just <laughs> left pretty Fe grim remains Phil dressed yes <laughs> a lot of guts in the ears <laughs> can't eat the, any of that puts him in a doggy bag and you know that could be the end. That could be. This could be the end. This like every page could be the. It, it, they all work as a single page unit. <laughs> so the spirit of Max is kind of like is in his hand, <laughs> and he takes his gnarly scalped head, puts it on the hand, draws. Yes. The With this fountain piece. pen. <laughs> And now it's walking around holding conversations. It's ridiculous. It is definitely ridiculous. I don't know how you come up with that stuff. Can't end the issue without bringing our guy back. So we have our sci-fi contrivance for that part. Yeah, that's easy to do. Yeah. Reanimation. They also bring a 50-foot uh, cockroach back to Earth. Doesn't seem like a great idea. Right. Shriners. Max is back. <laughs> Feeling better. It takes him a few panels, a couple pages to sort of round back into shape. All he needs is a little violence, man. He just needs a gun trained on him. Yes. And he's going to snap back into uh, his, his old self. And crush that gun-holding cockroach in a sequence that I really like. Yes. That's a that's a great cartoon foot and action. Heck of a gun, though, man. Nothing cartoony about that, some bitch. I think that's a reference piece there. Yes. <laughs> Look at the TV has like the uh, the coat hanger jammed into it for an antenna. Old school, man. Very old. Yeah, I guess we need to explain that gag to anybody. <laughs> we have any viewers under thirty? Throws that gun <laughs> in the closet full of all the other yes, guns. All the guns they've confiscated. And then like uh, like uh, yeah, explain that last panel for me, Ed. Like medieval minstrels, like. You know, just gonna gonna sing about the adventures that took that took place. Wrap it up with a banjo bagpipe uh, two two character band. <laughs> you bust me up, Max. What? <laughs> and that's how they end it. Yeah. We looked at that Gumby issue recently that also ends with the nice clean line work black and white piece on the inside back cover. Yeah. Uh, by Art Adams. So kind of nice to see this again, and it really does show off his uh, his ability with that brush. So Purcell, you know, very little comic work. 
uh, you could fit almost all of the comics he'd done in, you know, a 200-page TPB or something. Uh, certainly Sam and Max, maybe 150 pages of those. Did uh, wrote a Defenders of Dinatron City uh, miniseries in the early 90s, whenever that cartoon came out. Did some Fish Police stuff. But uh, we did the Gumby comic last issue, right? And we know Art Adams' artwork from superhero comics and all that. That's his opportunity to do Bigfoot. Uh, we know Purcell's stuff from Sam and Max predominantly. Want to see what he looks like when he's uh, doing a job? Let's see it. New Mutants number 43, when they were really trying to find their way, man. It's 40 issues till Uncle Rob comes by, man. And they Brett Blevins comes in, Kevin Nolan comes through, Kyle Baker comes through. Is that through. a Barry Windsor Smith cover? That's a Barry Windsor Smith cover. Doesn't look like his most inspired effort. No, definitely Valiant-ish. Uh, Barry Windsor Smith minus the color uh, let's take a look at a Jim Shooter era Steve Purcell guest penciler Wills Portacio on inks and this is like Steve is listening to Jim Shooter because this is all mid-level shots not one very dynamic piece in the entire comic just very by the numbers probably had no time like I, I, I would bet Maybe that guest penciler gets this meant we need to find a guy who could get this job done fast. Yeah. Finish this over the weekend, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Uh, 1986, I think, is your date on this. 1992, I think, is the date on the Sam and Max issue that we looked at to give uh, people at home. I mean, six years is a long time for somebody to maybe develop stylistically. Uh, and you see that, 86 being pretty early in his career kind of interesting how much you I, I would not have picked this out as the same artist right not at all I mean it's completely different subject matter he's he's got to use the perspective grids and stuff uh, on this man uh, seeing him tackle traditional you know human figures you could see that that's not his his, his strong suit uh, with this stuff he's he's a he's a cartoony guy this is about as dynamic as you're going to get the whole issue man Ileana Rasputin going, going crazy it does make me curious what he would be like if he had stuck with comics because you look at like early Mike Mignola stuff you know he has some of these issues uh, early in his in his resume where it just doesn't look like him at all either yeah. it's not necessarily bad but it's very different than what he would become and you become that I think over time and repetition and working these things out. So it would be curious if he had 2,000 pages instead of 200. It's also one of those things, too, where I'll, he could have just nestled into being a job guy and doing these kinds of uh, journey, journeyman comics and never took the, the shot and created a Sam and Max. And which became, I mean, it's a franchise, you know, it had, yeah. a, it had a cartoon, some, several video games, a lot of licensed stuff uh, came from that, it held on to the copyright through through all of it, man. So he gets mad props for that. Crazy, right? Yeah, very interesting that you, that uh, you could produce this. Got every issue of the run, man. Oh, oh, you're talking about Steve Purcell. I yeah, for meant... for a fill-in issue, like uh, like I said, it it just feels like something I would have never uh, come up with on my own. Right. So kind of nice to be able to see that. Uh, really interesting to compare side by side what is obviously uh, a, a, a book that is a passion of his. Yes. Versus you know a fill-in, a special guest, um, a direction he did not continue right uh you know interesting to compare corporate comics and personal comics there it is man good to go i am k favors like follow subscribe to the youtube video hit the bell will notify you when new vids are available what you got jimmy patreon.com slash jim rug where you can download my out of print hard to find zines and mini comics look at a lot of my original art see how i make the comics i make patreon.com slash jim rug you can learn some things about drawing uh, tire treads by looking at this image the way he does that right there. I really like that vehicle. It looks great. Red Room, issue number one. Going to be hitting stands May 2021. Uh, final orders have to be in, so go to your comic shop and put yours on reservation so that they could uh, hold, a, hold a copy for you. If you want to read the comics ahead of time, hit my Patreon up, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have coming up. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give him one less set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.